Good evening, and welcome to St. Mary's on this, the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Tonight, if you prefer to receive communion on the tongue, please come forward at the end of the procession. And if you need a low-gluten host, please see the mass coordinator at the sacristy table. Please go ahead and silence your cell phones. Our presider is Father Bauman this evening. Please stand as you're able and join in the opening song.
My friends, we are gathered here this afternoon in our worship, in our prayer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome, welcome. Uh, your pastor is uh, out of town on vacation someplace. I'm pretty confident it's someplace warmer than what we have right here. And I'm sure you join me in saying, I hope it's raining there right now, <laughs> wherever he is. No, no, hope he's having a great time. But anyway, uh, we prepare ourselves as always to enter more deeply into the celebration of God's love. And we do so by calling to mind our sins. We ask for God's enlightening, healing mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for a proclamation of God's word. A reading from the book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, said Eli. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and ran to Eli. Here I am, he said. I, you called me? But Eli answered, I did not call you. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not yet revealed anything to him. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. 
So he said to Samuel, go to sleep. And if you are called, reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not permitting permitting any of his words to be without effect. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him? Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to, they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. There are a few things that speak louder to us or capture our attention more than trying to address or meet some of our basic human needs. I mean, when you're hungry or thirsty, for instance, you, all you can think about really is how you're going to satisfy your hunger or your thirst, right? Many of the fast food commercials that we have can really grab our attention when we are in some of those more vulnerable times. Or consider, for instance, some of those advertisements that they have for dating services, attempting to address, once again, one of those basic human needs for companionship, for intimacy. Did you know that on St. Mary's Bulletin on the back, one of the advertisements that they have is for one of these dating services? Were you aware of that? I didn't know that. I just saw that, saw that recently. Yeah. It's a dating service called Catholic Match Minnesota. Catholic Match Minnesota. The first time I, I heard of it, as I say, I wasn't aware of it at all. I wonder if most denominations have these dating websites. SouthernBaptistMatch.com. The Church of Latter-day Saints Match.com. I wonder if many of them have that. Whether it be Catholic Match Minnesota or other dating sites, I'm sure a good number of people have found that special someone through those sites. 
whether we're aware of it or not, we can easily find ourselves, you know, being tempted, you know, by those things that are trying to attract us, you know, to satisfy those basic needs that we have. And all the while we can, all the while, while we can easily identify, you know, what those needs are, you know, food, shelter, companionship, clothing, whatever it might be. In our culture, the lines between needs and wants can easily become blurred. In our consumer culture, where virtually everything is available to us, moderation can be hard to maintain, let alone define. And good judgment is not always exercised. And so wants, wants all of a sudden become needs. It may help explain the amount of stuff that we've accumulated in our closets, our garages, our attics, and what also we tend to put into our bodies. Not only is the temptation to overindulge ever present, but there's also the danger of developing some unhealthy habits and also addictions. And as we know, too many lives have been tragically impacted by all kinds of addictions in our culture and our society. Someone believing that they are in control when in fact their lives are spinning out of control. And often they believe that they're just trying to attend or address a basic need, whatever that might be. Well, there's no denying the importance of addressing some of those needs. There's also the issues of proportionality of health, moderation, and self-discipline to consider. But we continue to listen to the messages telling us that something is missing, something is lacking. And so we overindulge, hoping, believing that on our own, we can satisfy our needs. In the gospel today, two disciples of John the Baptist are following Jesus when Jesus senses that he's being followed. And he turns around and he asks them the question, what are you looking for? How simple and yet how profound. It's actually one of the deepest questions a person can ask another or that we can even ask of ourselves. What is it, deep down, ultimately, that I am seeking, that I'm looking for? Is it recognition, acceptance, wealth, power, companionship, relief from physical or emotional pain? Is it knowledge? Is it truth or love? Ultimately, what am I looking for? The two men appear unable to articulate a response to the question, and instead they ask the question, Rabbi, where are you staying? For the Gospel writer John, from which this account is taken from that Gospel, this is not an inquiry into an address, Rather, it's a question seeking his identity. What they're really asking is, where do you come from? What is the source of your life? Who really are you? Jesus' response to them is, come and see. And that response is inviting them on a journey to discover not only who he is, but also how their relationship with him will result in a new identity for them. What begins as mere curiosity on their part, or the hope that this guy could be their ticket to fame and fortune, will eventually transform them through new understandings of what constitutes true power, surrender, sacrifice, humility, and love, as he will model these. You know, how we spend our time, our energy, and resources can be a, a reflection on where our priorities lie. They can also indicate the answer to the question, what am I looking for? The voices we tend to listen to in that regard can be enticing in that they try and convince us that our wants are really our needs, which tend to only leave us hungering for more and more and more. We overindulge. How easily enamored we can become with things that only provide a fleeting sense of security and happiness. And when we rely solely on our own wisdom to determine the course our life should take, 
we can find ourselves continually missing that sense of harmony and peace that we all strive for, that we all seek. The invitation to come and see is one that's always being extended to us by our God in word and sacrament, in the beauty of our creation, in the gift, the very mystery of life, in our many relationships. Remember that Jesus promised that our life in him would satisfy what? Our every need. He never said anything about satisfying our every want. The way of living Jesus modeled and requires of the disciple calls for a radical change because it often goes against our instincts for self-preservation. As Paul reminds us today in the second reading, your bodies are members of Christ and whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The gospel writer John uses words like stay, remain, abide, dwell, over 40 times in the gospel. He does this to highlight the answer to the question, where are you staying? It's in each one whose life and witness reveals a relationship with Christ. Those who identify with the one who laid down his life for the sake of the other, who did the will of the one who sent him, who is the way, the truth, and the life. My friends, please stand as we continue with our celebration this afternoon. Together now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Spirit incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We entrust the Father with our lives and needs in the same hope as Samuel and the first apostles. For all pastors and teachers of our church, may they proclaim with courage and conviction, as Samuel did in John the Baptist, the presence of God among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders who listen to the needs of their people and respond to them with honesty and humility, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the righteous to struggle against racism and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are victims of human trafficking, that through the assistance of others, they will know they are a child of God and be strengthened as members of the human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of this community who put their commitment to justice into practical action, we praise we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound, hospitalized, and sick, may they know God loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Bill Klecker, Bill Schutz, and Jerry Hines, may they rejoice forever with the teacher they followed on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our personal intentions, And especially for Louis Nozen Sr., Eric Martin, and St. Mary's Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Oh God, you call us to faithful discipleship and strengthen us to persevere. Hear these our prayers and lead us to fullness of life with you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. My friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our, our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of the compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself when was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Let me eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously, graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Together we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Savior has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer to our neighbor now a sign of peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. The 
And so with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ as his body here on earth. As we share in his suffering, we Let us pray. Pour on us, Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask you to be seated for just a second. Time's up. <laughs> just a second. Just a second. You said a second. You said a second. <laughs> I did check my watch, oh, and they can't leave for another 13 minutes. <laughs> really? Gosh. So, I've, I'm the one doing the announcements tonight, and I have three. Two are quick, and one is not quite as quick. But the first one. If you are a middle schooler or you live with a middle schooler or you know a middle schooler, 
We are sending a bus to Camp, not Camp Snoopy, to Nickelodeon Universe on Monday. It's gonna be too cold to do anything else, so if you wanna spend your day off from school doing something fun, go to the website, fill out the form online, and then show up with your $30 at 9.45 on Monday morning, okay? Don't forget, do it right away when you get home. All right, the next announcement. Most of you know me as Mary Beth Jamber, the Director of Sacraments and Worship, but I'm just like you, I'm a parishioner too. Years ago, when my grandfather died, because of health reasons, my grandmother was not able to go to his funeral. I still remember how painful that was for her to not be able to go to her husband's funeral after being married for more than 60 years. Years later, when my mom died, she had dear friends and colleagues in Texas and Florida. They weren't able to come to her funeral, but we had this. Anybody know what this is? <laughs> At this mass, more people will know. We sent VHS tapes to Florida and Texas so that people could still participate in her funeral. Today at St. Mary's, thanks to technology, what happened to my grandmother, that pain she endured, does not have to happen. We can live stream funerals, weddings, first communions, anything that takes place in our church. St. Mary's has a long history of using technology to connect with and engage our parishioners, whether we're here in the church or unable to leave home. Way, way back, we used to bring one of these to the local cable channel, and they would rebroadcast our masses three times every Thursday. We've come a long way. We all know that times change and technology changes. We've gone from VHS to the unimaginable technology challenges of COVID. None of us could have expected that. So over here we have two desks. From those two desks, we project the music and the responses up on the screens. We've all come to love those screens. It encourages us to participate. It helps our children learn the mass and it makes our visitors feel more welcome. As I said before, we can live stream mass, funerals, weddings, other sacramental events, speakers. Those two systems can talk to each other. So we can make sure that those projection screens are in a corner of the video that goes out to people on the live stream. We can also put a video shot up on these screens. If you were here for Christmas, we put the video picture of the blessing of the crush in the gathering space up on the screen so that we could see it. Every Sunday we broadcast to three other areas of the church. We broadcast to the St. Joseph room at nine o'clock. That room is full of families with little, little kids and they are so much happier to have that space and be able to participate in mass. We broadcast to the chapel and to the nursery. So see that second picture? That's why I'm up here is to ask to help us raise the funds for a new audiovisual control council. As our technology has been upgraded, we've continued to cram more components and more wires into those two desks and we've created Spaghetti Junction and our equipment is really, really tight. A new AV council will make troubleshooting easier, repairs easier, upgrades easier, and all of those things less expensive. We waste a lot of time crawling under those desks with flashlights. It will also make our system more reliable. The cost of the whole project is $25,000, and that includes the new furniture, the new desk, reorganizing all the components, and all rewiring of those components. I'm up here today to ask you to please Pray and discern if you are able to contribute to our mission of serving all of our parishioners, whether they're here with us at church or unable to leave home. Here's how you can help. Next weekend, we're gonna have a second collection. 
And if the baskets come back empty, I'm going to do a third collection. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can mail in a check that says AV console on the memo line. You can give me or any staff person or any mask coordinator a cash or check. That will work. Or you can donate online. See the QR code for our younger donors, more technology savvy donors? You can use the QR code to donate. If you have any questions about this project, you can talk to me after Mass. I noticed John McGuire was over here and Dan Fight is up there. So if you have any questions about the project, you can talk to any of us. Um, this really is important to the mission of the church and spreading the gospel. For our third announcement, and as an example of how we use our technology to evangelize, we have a short video um, about our Summer Academy Faith Formation Program. That registration opened this week, and we already have lots of people registering, so pay attention. Maybe this is what you want to do this summer. Oh, we need the audio. Bottom right. Bottom right on the screen. At least the technology is reliable if operator error is something else. Hours of instruction than if they attended every Wednesday. After. Summer Academy is a week-long adventure into what it means to be a baptized disciple of Jesus. It's for children preschool age through the eighth grade. They come all day, 8:30 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon for five full days. Here they gain six more hours of instruction than if they attended every Wednesday after school. Each day we delve into the questions we have like, who is Jesus? What is the Trinity? What is God trying to reveal to us? How do we use the Bible? And how do the sacraments enhance our lives? We embrace all learning styles by using breakout sessions in music, art, service projects, and playing games. We pray, take time for adoration, reconciliation, then end of the week with Mass, where the youth are the ministers. The children enjoy this camp style of learning about their faith. They're energized and have all day to become friends with their classmates, to ask tough questions, and dive deep finding the answers. Summer Academy provides the opportunity to cultivate curiosity about living life as a friend of Jesus. Summer Academy is a different style of learning. People will ask, if they only have five days of faith formation, what do they do the rest of the year? Well, you live out your baptismal call, attend mass, talk to people, tell them how important your faith is to you, join in the monthly community activities of the parish, and find ways to serve others. Summer Academy is a gift, and truly a week to remember. Summer Academy is a week-long adventure into... Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of us here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration has ended. We go forth now in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.